on this episode, we're reviewing a box. For the most part. Hello and welcome to The Snack Guy. My name is Ivan Hahn. I am The Snack Guy. You can probably tell by the lower third, the graphics, the titles, the theme song, the opening credits, the end credits, the URL, which is youtube.com slash the snack guy, because that's me. Today we are doing a very special, longer, more in depth, more snacks episode of the snack guy, because I am in partnership with a very cool company called British Box. They send me a box from the British land, from overseas, from the UK, from England, from over there, not here. I film here in America, as you can tell by uh, my accents, my very, very snack guy accent. I film here in the snack guy state of snack and guy. And uh, let me just tell you a little bit about British Box. British Box is a website that you can go to and get a curated snack box full of everything from the UK, from British areas of the world, and they send it to you in one clean, pretty little box, and you don't have to worry about it. You just ask them, hey, give me a small box, give me a large box, give me a medium box, give me the, the world's tiniest, the world's biggest, give me the box of boxes, and they're gonna put in some amazing British treats in there, and that's what I have here today, and we're gonna open this box just be warned, I already opened this box. Uh, your box will probably look a lot better than this box because this box I have dropped. Um, it went through the mail. This is, you know, some stuff happened along the way that the box looks a little rough. But hey, we got the box, we got the treats inside the box, and the box is going to be my, my co-worker today, so we're gonna have the box sitting right here, and we're gonna go through each individual item that's in this box, and one of them is a beverage, which is what I'm gonna start off with first. So I'm gonna put the box I'm gonna move the box just to give the credit to uh, this treat here. This treat is something amazing. This treat is something awesome. This treat is a beverage that's going to be in my stomach. I like having a beverage first because I can just keep that beverage here on the table with me the entire time and say, hey, it's part of the show. So let's talk about this, this item, this little mini thin skinny can for a second. This is Barry's Iron Brew, 1901. Iron is spelt I-R-N and brew is spelt B-R-U. It's usually not how you spell it. It's a fun little way to spell it, but this is the Iron Brew. It's in a very special, pretty orange can. This is... So I have no idea what this item is, but I'm gonna read the back and we're gonna to learn together. This is the Barry's Iron Brew, 1901. Taste the first ever iron brew recipe. So we know this is the first recipe they've made. I'm assuming back from, you know, 1901. Uh, brewed just like we used to in 1901. See, I called it out there. It's brilliantly sweet and caffeine free with a cheeky wee head on it. That's words I don't normally use. And uh, let's just, you know, it's caffeine free. It's, it's orange. It's, it's made from back in the 1901. And let's take a little, little sip. So that's a, it's in a tin can, an aluminum can, or an alloy minium can for all of you folks listening, not here in the U.S. where we bastardize the, uh, the U.S., the world language. And let me tell you right now, that smells deliciously like bubble gum. I don't know what it's going to taste like. I don't know if they had bubble gum back in 1901. They could have. I wasn't around then. I'm not that old. So let's take a quick sip of this brew. Oh, that is delightful. That is a delicious treat. It, it, it has a bubblegum flavor to it in a way, but it also has a little bit of like a bitter flavor to it and just kind of a, an overall nice tartness to it, which is nice. It's definitely sweet. There's a lot of sweetness to it, but it's good sweet. It's not, you know, punchy in the mouth with flavor sweet. It, it's good. It's, it's like, it, it, there's a... There's kind of like a medicine-y flavor to it, but in a good way, kind of like a root beer. It's kind of like a root-flavored beverage, but like I said, strong bubblegum, strong uh, acidic flavor to it, and definitely just, you know, it gets... It, it gets a five. It gets a five out of five for this one. It's weird, it's interesting. It's, it's something that I've never picked up in the store, never had before, and never really had the flavor of it, really. It kind of reminds me, there's a soda that's here, in the US, mainly on the East Coast, it's called a moxie. Moxie, it kind of has a moxie 
flavor to it, but a bit sweeter, but okay, five out of five, let's move on. So since we just had something sweet, something delicious, something very sugary and very liquidy, because it was a liquid, it was a beverage, it's a soda, it's carbonated, if I forgot to mention that before. Next up we have Walker's Prawn Cocktail Chips. They are 100% Great British Potatoes. These aren't none of your American potatoes. I might be tasting a different potato that I've never potatoed before in my life. And I'm Irish, so I know my potatoes. These are 100% Great British potatoes. And let's crack these open. I love a good prawn uh, chip or a shrimp chip, if you will. They're delicious. And if you don't know about Walker's, Walker's is Lay's. Lay's is Walker's. So this is kind of roughly the same company, if you could tell by the logo. Um, if you watch my Lay's potato chip episode, you can see, see how I talked about the different things. Oh boy, I have to burp. Uh, oh, I'm oh no. sorry, British box. But sometimes when you have carbonation, the burps come out. So yeah, these are just, it looks like a Lay's potato chips bags, but they're Walkers and Walkers might be better because they have better potatoes. I don't know. Ooh, that smells interesting. So it's not just a prawn chip, which I've had before, which I've gotten from my Asian food stores. This is a prawn cocktail or a shrimp cocktail potato chip, which is cool because you can kind of smell from the, the inside of the box, the inside of the bag, you can kind of smell the tomato-y cocktail sauce and a little bit of that shrimp prawn, I'm sorry, a little bit of that prawn flavor in it. Kind of smells good and just like every good bag of Lay's or Walker's or any potato chips, they've all settled to the bottom. So you got this giant bag with about, oh, that many potato chips in it. But hey, this is a 45 gram bag of prawn chip cocktail chips. And let's take a little, little taste. I do like them because the chips are a little bit smaller. Sometimes uh, I hate a potato chip that is way too big because I like to put one bite, one chip, one bite. Here we go. That's interesting. That's an interesting chip. It's very vinegar heavy, but not in a bad way. It's not like a salt and vinegar chip because there are other sweet flavors to it. There's some of the prawn flavor, some of the cocktail sauce flavor, but it's very vinegar heavy. And if you like vinegar, this is gonna be a great chip for you. But for me, it's a little vinegar heavy. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. A four out of five for the Walker's Supreme. I'm sorry, I forgot the Supreme. The Walker's Supreme Prawn Cocktail chip. Next up out of the British box, we have something that I know, something that I love, well, a brand that I know and love. The folks over at Cadbury have made this bar. It's called the Flake Bar. And if it's anything like me, it's very flaky. I'm, I'm a flake. Some people call me a flake. Some people call me a space cowboy. But Cadbury is a really good company. They've come over here um, quite a bit during, mainly mainly during the holidays. Um, when I was a child, they used to have the Cadbury cream eggs. Still do, don't know why I said used to. And uh, other Cadbury chocolate bars. Cadbury is just a better quality of chocolate in my opinion. I'm, um, I don't like Hershey bars, but I love me a Cadbury bar and I think they might be owned by the same people. I don't know, no time for that. Let's get through to the Flake Bar by Cadbury. I'm gonna open this up. And I feel like I'm gonna make a mess, I don't know why. But this is a, a, a good size, a good portion bar. This is definitely a, you know, a, a, a personal one segment, one sec, what am I trying to say here, folks? This is a, a individual flavor, an individual package. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at, and I don't know where I'm coming from with that. This is an individual bar, it is 25.5 grams. Do the math at home, I don't have time to convert your math for you. It's a worldwide show, folks. Figure out grams, figure out ounces. Let's do it. I don't have time for that. Okay, so I'm trying to open this up. And let's take a look on the inside. So on the outside, just, you know, what it is. It's a flake bar from Cadbury. That's what we got. It's milk chocolate. I'm assuming it's flaky. It's already all over my hands. But the UK, the British, the British box has better chocolate than the USA, folks. And I'm going to stand by that until somebody proves me different. Send me a box, hit me up in the DMs, the email, and the comments, and let me know if you want to send me some stuff, because I'll accept anything. So it looks like a, um, kind of like a Reese's, nope, a Nestle Butterfinger bar. That kind of like crispy flakiness, but I don't know what the inside is. It could just be flaky chocolate, which would be awesome too, because I like just pure milk chocolate. And here we go. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Well, first off, give me a second. This is why I'm happy I opened the, the brew early on because it 
So this is extremely wild. This is like something that I've never had in my entire life. I mentioned that it was kind of like a Butterfinger or Fifth Avenue bar. Throw those to the curb. This is amazing. This is just, I don't know how the fine folks at Cadbury did it. This is a flaky chocolate bar. The chocolate is flaky. Nothing on the inside. The it's not peanut butter, it's not whatever. It is just milk chocolate that they figured out how to flakeify. And yes, that is a word. If you want to copyright that, you need to pay me some money. But this is, it's flaky milk chocolate. And it's, it's, I wouldn't give it to a child unless you want to have, you know, chocolate all over your back seat of your car. But for an adult, for somebody who is, you know, not a messy slob, I mean, I'm a messy slob. But this chocolate bar is just I, amazing. The, the, the texture is really cool. Something that I've never dealt with ever besides in like a pastry or like I said, in a peanut butter form. I've never known you can flake, flakeify chocolate. And the chocolate is really good because it wasn't fully melting in my hand. So it has a little wax or something in it to make it not melt, but it's also not poor chocolate. It's really good, really flavorful, flaky chocolate. And I don't understand how they did that. For concept alone, I have to give this a five out of five. What's a five out of five for the Cadbury Flake Bar? Before we begin this next venture, this is where it starts becoming difficult for me to say words and titles of things. These are Jaffa Cakes, potentially Yaffa Cakes, but they're spelled J-A-F-F-A -F -F -A, cakes. I know the cakes thing. Boy, do I love me some cake, don't you? Who doesn't love a good cake? Pie is good too. So these are Jaffa Cakes, the original from the McVitties, McVitts, McVitties. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm uneducated and unaware of how to say words, but these are Jaffa Cakes, Jaffa Cakes, cakes made from Jaffa. And you, uh, there's instructions on the box, which is great. It tells me to peel here. Um, this is a 10 cake box. Um, and I'm gonna unpeel here. So let's unpeel, which I just did. That was the sound of me unpeeling. And on the inside of these, this pretty cardboard box is a clear plastic tube of Jaffe, Yaffe cakes. I'm just gonna call them cakes from now on. You get it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to stop embarrassing myself. So these little cakes look like individual cookies dipped in chocolate on one side and the other side is just cookie. And you, like I said, uh, you get 10, 10 in the case. Let's, they smell good. They smell damn good, if you will. And ooh, you know what? That's not the same texture that I thought it was gonna be. These are kind of, kind of mushy, kind of like a cake. I get it now. So let's take a bite. There's some chocolate on the bottom of this and there's the cookie cake thing on the other side. And it's nice. It's a nice 50% ratio of cake to chocolate and they're the original. So it's going to taste original. Original like what? I don't know. Ooh. Oh, that's delightful. Ooh. Okay. I'm not mad about any of this. I wasn't expecting a fruit filling on the inside. Sure, if I would have read more of the package and educated myself on anything that I'm talking about today, I probably would have known, but I don't have time for that. I fired the Snack Guy Labs. So on the inside of this, there's chocolate on the bottom or on the top, depending on where you hold it. In between the chocolate and the cake is some kind of raspberry berry jam, jam. filling, and it's delicious. It's, it's, it's different. There's three textures on the inside. Crisp chocolate, mushy jam, scrunchy cake, mushy cake, jammy jam, and chocolate. Mushy cake, jammy jam, and crisp chocolate. And it's just delicious. It's really delightful. I'm actually, this is more of like a, an adult flavory thing. It, it's, it's, it's sophisticated, if you will. This would good, 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 good. This will, this would go well with a cup of hot tea. A nice Earl Grey tea, maybe a nice herbal tea if you want to have something to uh, go with your jam. But, mm, this would be good to dip in. I can't dip in this brew. These are actually really delightful. The top's a little dry, but then you have the berry jam jelly on the inside, and then you have a little bit of the chocolate to give a little bit more sweetness. Five out of five, just, mm, just delicious. I really wish I knew what they, Yaffe Cakes. Next up, we have another thing from the Cadbury Chocolate Company and they're hitting it 
out of the park. We have something called the Freddo Bar or the Frito Bar. I pronounce it Freddo because Fred D.O. Fred D.O. Bar. The Freddo Bar has a cute little frog on the front and it is a milk chocolate little chocolate guy creation for kids, for youth, for anybody. And you have a little small little chocolate bar here and we're gonna crack this little thing open. We're gonna look at it, we're gonna smell it, we're gonna taste it, we're gonna make it all the way in our mouth. And oh my God, there's a little Freddo character stamped on the chocolate bar and I love when they do that, when they put their mascot right on the bar and they, they, they give you a nice little treat so you can bite its little face off. And here we go, Freddo, I'm sorry about this, but your head's coming off into my mouth. Oh no! This is a fun little morsel treat that you can throw into your lunchbox and we have two of them here in the British box and it's really delightful, really enjoyable and something I feel like you're going to love and it's small. Every now and then you just need a nice little treat of chocolate and you don't want to open up a full bar or have a full messy thing. This is a cute little thing. Give it to your kids, hide it for yourself for your midday snack craving and it's uh, you know, it's not that creative. It's not that original. 4.5 out of 5. It's good chocolate but I've had better things today. The next exciting treat that I just pulled out of the British box here is Hobnobs, the Oaty one. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming like Oat, like O-T one, not O-T from uh, Garfield. Do you guys see the Garfield movie? It's fun, it's a cute movie. But we're not talking about Garfield now. We're talking about these oat cookie things. They're called Hobnobs, H-O-B-N-O-B -O -O apostrophe S, Hobnobs. Milk chocolate, the OD1. Let's open this up. It is quite the big package here. This is a 250 gram, I think. It said it somewhere. We'll just say it's 250 grams. I don't know what it is. I might be losing my mind. But it's a big, it's a big honking thing of Hobnobs OD1 chocolate cookies. And let's open these up and try them. You can really smell the oat cookie in there. It's, it's, it's a nice, cookie flavoring smelling thing. And I'm gonna break a few of these apart and try them. They look quite delicious. They are a, a, a decent sized cookie biscuit treat. They are messy. They are a little crumbly, which you gotta be a little warned about, but hey, what's a little cleanup between snack crumbs, between friends? There's a little chocolate on the bottom. There's a cookie on top and these are going in my mouth. It's quite the interesting flavor. I, I like Odie type of things. I like oats. I like baked oats. I like, I like the flavor that it gives. The flavor that this is giving is sweet and salty, which is a huge plus for me, but it's also kind of like gritty and crunchy too. It, it's, it, it, it's not just like a soft cookie, but it's not hard to break your teeth. You can kind of bite into it, but then have some crunch in there. Kind of like one of those granola bars that you get at like an airport that make crumbs everywhere. The, um, uh, nature, the Nature Valley Crunchy Bars, kind of like one of those with a little bit of chocolate on the bottom, but more foul, finely ground up oatmeal consistency than one of those. It's really tasty, really like, I love that salty, I love that sweet, I love that, that ground up texture. And this is like something that I've never really had before in this kind of context. Mm. That's a good chocolate because it's melting in my fingers and in my mouth. Yeah, it, this is, it, it's an unusual treat that I've just never had before, but I'm very delighted in eating. Uh, this gets a five out of five. A five out of five for something that I've never had before, a, a texture that I've never had. This is why I love getting boxes like this because you never know what you're gonna get. And it's always a surprise for yourself because you know sometimes you might not buy that thing in the store because it looks weird. It's not your typical Oreo or chocolate treat that you might enjoy. So getting a box like the British box, which is what I have here today, is like going trick or treating every day because you can order this stuff and have it in your mailbox and it's a surprise. Sure, some of the stuff might not be up your alley, but it's all delicious, all amazing, and all like a fun new treat that we don't have here in the US. That's why you should do yourself a favor and order one today, right now. I'll wait. And last but not least, this might be the best thing. I don't know why people say last but not least. You know, this could be the least. This could be the worst thing ever. But I bet you it's not because it looks fun, it looks amazing, and I can't pronounce it. So this is a Nestle Sherio, S-H-A-E-R-O. I'm pretty sure I've seen Aero bars before, but they might be saying Shero because it's, you know, 
you're sharing with people. It's a bigger size. There's there's a, a, a fun foundation with it, but this is the Aero Bar from Nestle. This is an interesting treat that's supposed to be really good and I've never had. This is a 90 gram bar that came in the British box, which I'm going to enjoy today. And I'm really not um, sure what the flavor is, but hey, it's gonna be delicious. It's a pretty big bar. It's, it's, it's a multi-serving bar. Okay, so I don't know why I thought it was going to be green. Maybe because the bubbles on the outside are green, but hey, whatever. I'm gonna open it up, but not fully because I don't wanna make too much of a mess. Let's crack this open. Oh, so the the bubbles on the inside. Oh, that's really cool. Did I miss that? It's green because it's mint flavored. It is a mint chocolate arrow bar with all the bubbles on the inside. So it's like you're brushing your teeth, but you don't need to go through the hassle of brushing your teeth. Please brush your teeth. You don't want to go to a dentist and get drilling done. Just don't, don't take my word for things. So this is super cool looking. I'm going to take one leg, one set of chocolate squares. And I just want to, you know, I'm gonna put a close up on the screen. These are super cool. There's like little bubbles that are on the inside of this that popped and left kind of like a foam chocolate interior with a regular milk chocolate exterior. So you got, you got your regular brown chocolate, milk chocolate, and on the inside you have green bubbles, which smell minty and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm a person who loves me a good mint chocolate chip ice cream. It has to be good. If it's not good, throw it away. And this seems like it's gonna be good. Hmm. You know, the texture is interesting. The texture is weird, but in a good way. It, it's weird in a fun kind of way. The mints and the chocolate go together super well. These are really amazingly flavored items. Um, if you don't like mint, it is definitely a strong mint flavor. If you don't like mint, avoid this product and just move on to another Aero chocolate something. But this is actually pretty darn good. It's a really good mix of intense mint with intense chocolate and the weird bubbles. And I kind of want to like, it said let the bubbles melt and I kind of want to do that live on camera for you all. So it's, it's, it's just chocolate that melts. I don't understand where they said let the, the bubbles melt. But when you bite through it and it's, it's crisp and it's nice and it's, it's firm and not melty, the texture on the inside of it is, is cool. The bubbles, you can tell they, they did something. It's not as cool as the flake bar, which we had earlier on, but there's definitely something different, something with a flavor. I love when companies do something weird and different and it's airy, it's not overly chocolatey in your mouth. Gimmick wise, it's super cool. Flavor wise, it's okay. I love mint chocolate chip. I love everything about this. Um, four and a half, four and a half out of five for the Aero bar or the Shero bar. So you can share it with your friends, just like you should probably do if you get the British box, which you can get over at british-box.square.sites. That's B-R-I-T-I-S-H dash B-O-X dot S-Q-U-A-R-E dot S-I-T-E. And the fine, fine folks over at British Box set us up with, and you up, with a great promo code that you can enter upon checkout. That'll be 5% off the order of anything that you get over at BritishBox.com. And that is the Snack Guy 5 at checkout. T-H-E-S-N-A-C-K-G-U-I-5 at checkout. And we would like you so much to head on over to British Box and pick up yourself, pick up yourself, pick yourself up a box to enjoy with yourself, get a bigger one, enjoy it with your family, or just hide it in your car and just eat all the, the treats because each one of them were delicious, unique, and special, and all from the United Kingdom, England, Britain, over there across the pond. So thank you so much again for the fine, fine folks over at British Box. And thank you guys so much for taking time with me and watching a little bit longer of an episode and enjoying some snacks from around the world, really just one region of the world, just not from here. And until next time, I'm Ivan Han, the Snack Guy. This was the British Box. Head on over to their website, information down in the comments below. Go enjoy a snack, go enjoy some fun. And you know, if I can give this 
Iron Brew 1901 a 10? I would. But that's not what my scores go to, and I have to set my rules. See you next time, and thanks again.